I am speaking with... Gail Lockman mcdowell Gail, what do you do? I'm the founder and CEO of a company called Career Cup, which hosts interview questions for software engineers. And then I'm the author of two books, Cracking the Coding Interview and the Google Resume. All right, that is what you're about to talk about, Cracking the Coding Interview. So uh, the people who are going to watch this, who unfortunately didn't get a chance to go to that presentation, or maybe some of the people here did, but give me a summary. What, what are some of the big issues you need to know about nailing that coding interview? So the first thing to know, which a lot of people already know, is that you're going to be, in, in a coding interview, you're actually going to be writing code typically on a whiteboard. So you're not going to have a compiler in front of you, and that means that how, how you're used to coding is very different from what you're going to be doing on, in an interview. And so one of the things to realize is that you need to actually practice whiteboard coding. So you need to look at interview questions that you can find on Career Cup that have about, has about 8,000 interview questions across the major tech companies. Look at interview questions, practice actually writing them by, by hand, and even debugging them by hand. And you need to actually make sure you get every last semicolon in place because pseudocode is generally not acceptable. So that's one of the major things people need to realize. But then the talk goes into a lot more details about different algorithms that work well for interviews. Well, let, let's talk about that. What are the algorithms that work well for interviews? So there's a couple different approaches. One is what I call pattern matching, which is sort of an approach if you say, well, what interview questions are similar to this? And you try to solve it first with that approach. Another one is what's called simplify and generalize. And what this means is you take a problem and you, you don't know how to solve it initially, and so you simplify it, you tweak, or you tweak little constraints, and you solve a simplified version of the problem. And then you go up and you generalize to the regular problem, and you see, does that approach apply to this one? Uh, another approach is what's called base case and build. What this means is to solve the problem to, for, say, the n equals 0, n equals 1 case, and then see, can you use the solutions from prior problems to solve for the n equals two, n equals three, and build up from there. Excellent, what are, what are the ways that people fail in a coding interview? Because I actually, when I was in college, I had a coding interview and I definitely failed. <laughs> so where do you, do you think the missteps happen? Well, I think one, one big thing is people, ex, people have this misconception that you're expected to hear a problem then immediately belt out the right answer. And that's not really how it works. When you get an interview question, you're not, expected to immediately know the answer. Your interviewer, interviewer wants to know, how do you think about the problem? How are you going to approach it? And so, you know, don't get flustered. Don't expect that you're supposed to know the right answer. Because for even the best candidates, it can take them 30 minutes or more to work through an interview, an interview question. So when you get the problem, th talk out loud. Explain to your interviewer the brute force solution, how you're thinking about it, what the trade-offs of different solution are, and try to improve from there and increasingly get a more and more optimal algorithm. Excellent. Hey, thank you so much for your time. Thanks so much.